Father, I would ask that you would anoint my lips and our ears. May we listen. May we see Jesus as our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. It was the week between Christmas and New Year's. Our son Anthony was about six years old at the time. He's now more than 30, so you can do the math. He asked me a most interesting question that week. He said, Papa, is it still Christmas time or is it all over? I think I have, I'm supposed to have some slides here somewhere. December 26 scarcely rolls around when merchants are totaling the tills. In no time flat after Christmas, the financial analysts have it all figured out. They can tell you if there was an increase or a decrease in holiday shopping sales compared to previous years. They can tell if the purchasing of apparel was down significantly and if the sale of electronic items was up. Papa, is it still Christmas time or is it all over? Come December 26 and stores are clearing out all their holiday merchandise. Christmas decorations are at clearance prices. Christmas trees are coming down. Those that are real are either chopped and burned up in the fireplace or set out to the curb for the Boy Scouts to pick up. Christmas ornaments and decorations are boxed and stored for another season. Radio stations file their Christmas music for another year. I stopped by Costco this week after Christmas. All the Christmas stuff was gone. In fact, <clears throat> they were setting up for spring. Patio furniture, garden supplies, no sign of Christmas. It was gone. The only sign of Christmas that existed at Costco was the long line of people returning their unwanted Christmas gifts. Papa, is it still Christmas time or is it all over? Never mind the fact that Halloween had not even arrived before boxed Christmas cards and window displays were beckoning people to get in the holiday spirit. But come December 26, and Christmas is a thing of the past. Papa, is it still Christmas time, or is it all over? When Anthony asked me that question, I, I pondered it. Then I asked him a question. Don't you think it ought to be Christmas time all the time? If the real reason for the season is about Jesus and not Santa Claus, lights and tinsel, then Christmas time ought to be celebrated all the time. If we're going to celebrate Christmas time all the time, then does that mean we need to leave the decorations up 365? If not, then how do we celebrate Christmas time all the time? I believe we do that by proclaiming the joy of Jesus 24-7, 365. How? I'd like to suggest today five different ways that we can proclaim the joy of Jesus and celebrate Christmas time all the time. First of all, by proclaiming the joy of the Incarnation. The time of the first advent of Christ, the celebrating didn't begin three months before and end the day after His birth. The celebrating began, if you can call it that, when Jesus, the Son of God, offered to be incarnated as a human being after the fall of man. Heaven was concerned about the problem, but Jesus became the immediate solution. And millenniums before he was born in Bethlehem's manger, it, manger, it was announced 
that Jesus would be the sacrifice. God gave the promise of the coming Messiah to Adam and Eve after they sinned. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 tells us about that. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. The celebrating continued when the angels announced to the shepherds the arrival of the Lamb of God. It continued when Simeon blessed the Christ child in the temple. The Christmas celebration continued when Anna the prophetess held the Messiah and thanked God for the gift. The celebrating continued when the wise men arrived in Bethlehem and paid homage and presented gifts to the King of Kings. And we can continue the celebration as we tell and retell the story of the Incarnation. The mystery of how an omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, everlasting God left the comforts of heaven to become a man. We can proclaim the joy of Jesus. Number one, by proclaiming the joy of the Incarnation. But we can proclaim the joy of Jesus and celebrate Christmas time all the time by proclaiming the joy of His life. There was nothing glorious about His life. He didn't live in a palace. He didn't even have a place to call home. Yet the simple, unselfish, earthly life of Jesus is a story that bears telling over and over and over again. Listen to the description of the life of Jesus by the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 7. Paul says, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And listen to the description of the Messiah that Isaiah the prophet gave in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 2 and 3. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Jesus didn't come to earth to talk about himself. He came to point mankind to a loving, heavenly Father. He came to vindicate the character and reputation of of his Father, who had been wrongly accused by Lucifer of being unjust and unfair. The story of Jesus is a story that is worthy of being told again and again and again. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and His glory, of Jesus and His love. We can proclaim the joy of Jesus by proclaiming the joy of His birth and the joy of His life. But we can also proclaim the joy of Jesus and celebrate Christmas time all the time by proclaiming the joy of his death. One doesn't usually think of death as being an experience to celebrate. Most of you know that I lost my father earlier this year. And seven years ago, I lost my younger sister. To say nothing of losing my in-laws and several other family members. But all of you know what it's like to lose someone close to you, someone you love. Death isn't joyful, and it certainly wasn't for Jesus. So how is it possible that we can proclaim the joy of his death? The Apostle Paul points that out in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. Notice what it says. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Wow. 
That is something worth celebrating. Jesus didn't just die for me. He died as me. Jesus took your lifetime of sins, my lifetime of sins, and bore them on the cross. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, the Apostle Paul says this, And being found in the appearance as man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And back to the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 and 5, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. How more more barbaric can you get? hanging the Son of God on a tree. Yet by that very act, we can experience the joy of salvation. The true meaning of Christmas is about salvation to a lost planet. Thank you, Jesus, for the joy we can encounter because of your death. But proclaiming the joy of Jesus doesn't end with his death. We can proclaim the joy of Jesus through the incarnation, through his life, through his death. But we can proclaim the joy of Jesus and celebrate Christmas time all the time by proclaiming the joy of his resurrection. Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 6, we read these words. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Proclaiming the joy of a resurrected Jesus is not simply the proclamation of of an event that took place 2,000 years ago, but the truth that Jesus longs to be crucified and resurrected anew in each of us today and every day. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, the Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live But Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We can experience and proclaim the joy of the incarnation of Jesus not only to this world 2,000 years ago, but his willingness to be incarnated into our lives today. So we can proclaim the joy of Jesus by the incarnation by his life, by his death, by his resurrection, and by proclaiming his soon return. It would be all meaningless, friends, if we didn't have the hope of the second coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 55, says, Behold, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, But we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible is put on incorruption, and this mortal is put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? In Revelation chapter 14 and verse 14, we read, I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. There's an interesting story told of a Colonel Davenport who was speaker of the Connecticut House of Representatives. One day in 1789, the sky of Hartford, Connecticut had darkened ominously. 
And some of the representatives, glancing out the window, feared that the end was at hand. Quelling a clamor for immediate adjournment, Davenport rose and said, The day of judgment is either approaching or it is not. If it is not, there is no cause for adjournment. If it is, I choose to be found doing my duty. Therefore, I wish that candles be brought. Unfortunately, there are many people in the world that are not looking forward to the second coming of Jesus because they're not ready. For them, His return will be anything but joyful. But in the darkness of this world, Jesus is calling us to proclaim the joy of Jesus and the difference He can make in life, both now and in the future. The true meaning of Christmas is about proclaiming the joy of Jesus through His incarnation, His life, His death, His resurrection, and His second coming. It's about proclaiming the good news of righteousness by faith in Christ alone. It's not just for one day a year or even a few months of the year, but every day of the year. At Christmas time, people are typically in a giving mood. And that spirit of giving is often appealed to during the holidays. Some time ago, I heard a radio spot that aired just before Christmas. A particular mattress outlet was appealing to people to give them a call if they knew of anyone needing a mattress for Christmas. They would take old mattresses that they had received when delivering new ones and give them to people in need. It was kind of a mattress recycling program, so to speak. But what amused me by the ad was that at the very end, it was tagged with this appeal. Quote, Won't you please call today because no one should be sleeping on the floor at Christmas. (laughs) What does that imply? That any other time of the year, it's okay for the less fortunate to sleep on the floor at Christmas or or, or, uh, any day of their life? Is the spirit of Christmas only meant to be celebrated once a year? Trees, ornaments, lights, and decorations will soon be coming down and stored for another year. Even our lovely decorations here in the church will soon come down and be placed in storage. Somehow, we have neatly packaged Christmas. In preparation for its arrival, we take it out of the box, and when it's all over, we rebox and shelf it for another year. Papa, is it still Christmas time, or is it all over? Within the next few days, most of you will be putting away Christmas for another year. Lights and trees will come down, decorations boxed up. Quaint little Christmas villages with miniature people will be stored for another 11 months. Nativity sets will be bubble wrapped and boxed. But this year, as you put away Christmas, I challenge you, don't put away Jesus. Don't put Jesus in a box for another year. Put him in your heart and experience and proclaim the joy of Jesus throughout the new year. You see, the real story of Christmas is the good news that with Jesus, it's Christmas time all the time. And that good news should bring joy to the world. We sang that song to start our worship. So let's sing once again. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth prepare to see their king. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing, 
and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love oh lord god thank you so much for the gift of jesus Thank you that you never intended for Christmas time to be celebrated one day a year or even for a few weeks. But may we celebrate the joy of Jesus and all that you came to offer through your incarnation, through your life, through your death, through your resurrection, and through your second coming. May we experience joy in our hearts and joy to the world. And now as we close out this last Sabbath of 2019, May that joy of Jesus and the hope of seeing you again soon live within our hearts as we face this new year. And until we see you face to face is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.